in the name of Allah good morning the great four how are you and miss you so much hope that you are all fine today we will complete our online teaching and we will start with lesson 5 learners book lesson 5 Charlie and the chocolate factory Charlie and the chocolate factory please open your learner book page 88 what our aims for today today's aims to read and listen to extracts from Charlie and the chocolate factory story make sure we are on page 88 lesson 5 Charlie and the chocolate factory a number one talk about it would you like to visit a chocolate or sweet factory what do you think it would be like inside do you remember the stages of making a chocolate that we studied in the previous lesson last lesson okay I think you have thought about the answers number two read and listen read and listen to Charlie and his family but let me give you an advice my advice for you is to go to YouTube now watch the movie of Charlie and the chocolate factory if you haven't watched it before it is amazing movie or at least you can watch a review about it to take a general idea about the lesson and know it after that come and listen to after that listen to the text and then answer these questions question number one why was life difficult for Charlie? Number two, what did he eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Number three, what was special about the chocolate factory in his town? Number four, why did his dream come true? Now listen and write the answers for your questions track 32 from charlie and the chocolate factory by roald dahl charlie and his family charlie bucket was a young boy who lived with all his family six grown-ups in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town the house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people, and life was extremely uncomfortable for them all. Mr. Bucket was the only person in the family with a job. He worked in a toothpaste factory, where he sat all day long at a bench and screwed the little caps onto the tops of the tubes of toothpaste after the tubes had been filled. But a toothpaste cap screwer is never paid much. So, there wasn't even enough money to buy proper food for them all. The only meals they could afford were bread and margarine for breakfast, boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch, and cabbage soup for supper. And the one thing Charlie longed for more than anything was chocolate. Even worse, in the town where Charlie lived, there was an enormous chocolate factory. In fact, it was the largest and most famous in the world. One day, it so happened that Willy Wonka, who owned the factory, announced that he would invite the five lucky children who found the golden tickets hidden underneath the wrapping of his chocolate bars to visit his factory. Not only that, but they would all receive a gift of sweets and chocolate to last a lifetime. Well, 
of the five children who won. Augustus Gloop was one, and, believe it or not, Charlie was another. Exercise 3. Read and listen to Inside the Chocolate Factory. Look at the green words in the text and match them with the words below with a similar meaning. Use your dictionary to help you. Now listen and then we will answer the question. Inside the chocolate factory, the chocolate room. An important room this, cried Mr. Wonka, taking a bunch of keys from his pocket and slipping one into the keyhole of the door. This is the nerve center of the whole factory, the heart of the whole business. Mr. Wonka opened the door. Five children and nine grown-ups pushed their ways in and oh, what an amazing sight it was that now met their eyes. They were looking down upon a lovely valley. There were green meadows on either side of the valley and along the bottom of it there flowed a great brown river. What is more, there was a tremendous waterfall halfway along the river, a steep cliff over which the water curled and rolled in a solid sheet and then went crashing down into a boiling, churning whirlpool of froth and spray. Below the waterfall, and this was the most astonishing sight of all, a whole mass of enormous glass pipes were dangling down into the river from somewhere high up in the ceiling. They really were enormous, those pipes. There must have been a dozen of them at least, and they were sucking up the brownish muddy water from the river and carrying it away to goodness knows where. Graceful trees and bushes were growing along the river banks. In the meadows, there were thousands of buttercups. There! cried Mr. Wonka, dancing up and down and pointing his gold-topped cane at the great brown river. It's all chocolate! Every drop of that river is hot, melted chocolate of the finest quality. The waterfall is most important, Mr. Wonka went on. It mixes the chocolate. It churns it up. It pounds it and beats it. It makes it light and frothy. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall. And do you like my meadows? Do you like my grass and my buttercups? The grass you are standing on, my dear little ones, is made of a new kind of soft, minty sugar that I've just invented. I call it swudge. Try a blade. Please do. My dear students, send me the answers for exercise 2 and exercise 3. Before everything, watch the movie. It will help you a lot. See you next time. But before I leave you for today, I want to tell you something. Take your English level a step higher. See you next time. Bye.